Congratulations. You or someone close to you has brought a brand new sacred little human being into the world. As a pagan, you will want to celebrate that birth with family, friends, and your community. This is the first in a series I'm going to do on pagan life events in those times we often celebrate together. Pagan baby celebrations serve a couple of functions. They actively celebrate the new child and offer thanks for their birth. They're also an essential way of strengthening our community bonds and ensuring the child is introduced into the pagan culture. As pagans, we recognize that families come together in many different ways. Pagan celebrations are for the birth or adoption of a new child. You can have a baby blessing ceremony when you first bring the child home or at any time after the birth. Paganism, with its diverse traditions, places great importance on the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. Welcoming a baby into the world is a powerful moment symbolizing the continuation of these cycles. Pagan baby celebrations are not just about the individual child, but are also about acknowledging their place within the greater web of life. These rituals often emphasize the connection between the newborn, their ancestors, the natural world, and the divine. Pagan baby celebrations involve calling for the protection and blessing of a patron deity upon the child and welcoming them into the home and the larger community. Not a lot of information has survived about how pagans traditionally celebrated childbirth. However, I will share some common practices in just a moment. Ironically, we can tell a lot from graves. One of the oldest known burials is from Kenya in Africa. Whoops, sorry, forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> so one of the oldest known burials is from Kenya in Africa, where a three-year-old child who lived and died around 78,000 years ago, its small head was rested on a pillow of grasses and flowers, and they were wrapped in animal skins. Children were loved members of communities, and the ancients had many different ways of recognizing their arrival. Before the baby comes home, you may want to smudge the home to remove negative energies and give protection. I always give special attention to doors and windows. Having an altar in a new baby or young ch child's room is a great way to draw in positive energy and honor maternal deities. You can place pictures or figures of mother, mother goddesses on the altar. One of the major preparations for birth is the lighting of candles. Along with prayers to the mother deity, this can offer protection for the expecting mother. The light shows you or her the way. The more prayers and positive energy at this time, the better. Celebrating the birth itself often involves easing the delivery for the mother and celebrating her unique role. This is often harder in a modern hospital, but it's still possible. Make sure to discuss with the doctor or midwife beforehand what you can bring into the room and the delivery area. It's also important to emphasize our connection to nature and family during the occasion of the birth. Many pagans choose to give birth at home or in the natural environment because of this. Work with your doctor as well as honoring the spirits. Welcoming a new baby or child is a joyous occasion across all cultures and pagan traditions often unique and meaningful ways to celebrate this milestone. Rooted in ancient practices and deeply connected to nature, Pagan baby celebrations focus on blessing the child, honoring the earth, and gathering community support. One of the most important pagan baby rituals is the naming ceremony. The name chosen for a child in pagan traditions is often seen as a reflection of their spirit, character, and destiny. This ceremony might include calling upon deities, ancestors, and elements to bless the name and the child. Parents might select names with deep spiritual meaning, often connected to mythology or celestial bodies. During the naming ceremony, the child is introduced to the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. 
Each element is represented by a symbolic item, such as a stone, feather, candle, and water. The parents, or a chosen officiant, might then speak words of blessing, asking for the qualities of each element to be bestowed upon the child. A circle is cast and the child is passed around the group, with each person offering a blessing or wish for the baby's future. The circle might also include an offering to the earth or a local deity, such as planting a tree in honor of the child's birth. For various reasons, many pagans prefer to adopt children rather than give birth. Whatever the reason, adoption is an acceptable part of pagan traditions. Adopted children are like any other, both legally and religiously. Paganism welcomes all. What's so great about pagan religions is that the ceremonies is that they are adjustable. Why not celebrate the baby's adoption day as that's how, the, how or when they joined your family. Just adjust any rituals as you see fit. Go ahead as usual with the naming ceremony and dedication. Often parents choose the legal names for their adopted children, especially babies. You can and should do the same for their pagan name. Likewise, your adopted child still should be introduced into your community and household like any biological child would be. It can even be more important to ensure your adopted child is properly welcomed and dedicated so they adjust better into their new home. If you follow Gaelic or Celtic pagan traditions, you may wish to have a seining ceremony around the bed of childbirth or the baby's cradle once you arrive home. Seining is another method of purification. Fire has long been recognized for its protective qualities and has, has the added advantage of symbolically lighting the way in the dark, so the ceremony involves using a flame. Saining is an old Scottish word for blessing, protecting, or consecrating. There are similar words in other Gaelic languages. Holding a saining for a new child involves blessing and protecting them and warding off, warding them against the evil eye. Saining should not be confused with smudging. It is used to affirm and uphold the natural order and purify the environment. The smoke used in the ceremony is traditionally from juniper or yew, but you can also use sacred herbs like tobacco, cedar wood, sage, and sweet grass. I have a video on pinecone magic. Pine cones have great protection qualities. A pine candle or other candle is often twirled around the bed in a seining ceremony while reciting a charm or incantation over the baby. This is a wonderful purification ritual. If you follow Norse pagan traditions, you can sprinkle the baby with drops of water while praying to the goddesses Frigg and Freya for protection. The Vikings sang ritual galder songs to protect the new mother and baby. A galder is a spell or incantation chanted by the mother or father or those who are present at the birth. In the Viking pagan tradition, nine nights after the birth, the father places the child on his knee and the little one is sprinkled with water. The dad officially welcomes the baby to the home and family. A pagan dad might wish to prepare a short speech containing a welcome, a blessing, and a prayer asking the deity of the hearth to protect and accept their child. This famous Norse prayer is more about victory than welcoming a child, but it's a great prayer to lift up. If you know of any good prayers or blessings from the ancients for child ceremonies, please let me know. Wiccan baby celebrations often align with the wheel of the year, the annual cycle of seasonal festivals. For instance, a baby born around Samhain in October might have a ceremony that honors ancestors, while a baby born around Beltane in May may have a ceremony celebrating fertility and new life. These seasonal connections reinforce the child's bond with nature and the changing cycles of the earth. In Wiccan, Druid, and other traditions, a priest or priestess can be asked to preside over the naming ceremony. This is where the child is held up to those gathered and introduced to a deity and to the community. 
Since paganism is nature-based, the naming ceremony is usually held outdoors amidst flowers and trees. In nice weather, a welcoming circle of stones and flowers may be created to place the child in while the adults offer a blessing. In ancient Rome, children were given names during a purification ceremony called the Dies Lustrius, or Day of Lustration. The ceremony took place on the eighth day after birth for girls and the ninth day for boys. This ceremony removed any harmful spirits that may have entered the child during birth. The ceremony also officially welcomed the child into the family and community. The day was celebrated with a feast and the goddess Nundina was honored. In many pagan traditions, godparents or spiritual guardians are chosen to support the child's spiritual growth. These individuals are not only close friends or family members, but also people who will guide the child in understanding and practicing pagan values. The selection of godparents is often part of the blessing or naming ceremony. Some pagans opt to give the baby both a secret and a secular name. Since the naming of a child is one of the first and most significant gifts to offer, the name should be chosen with care and following the parent's pagan pathway. Did you know that it was pagans who first celebrated birthdays? We know that ancient Greeks believed that each baby was protected by a spirit that coincided with their birth date. The Greeks often baked moon-shaped cakes adorned with lighted candles as a tribute to the goddess Artemis. Similarly, many indigenous people mark their birthdays by the moon phase and stars. Actually, marking the day of birth did not come until people started using calendars. Some pre-Christian calendars did exist. Sumerians developed a lunar calendar, and the Egyptian calendar was based on the sun. The Mayans developed a two-year solar calendar. One of our goals here at Celebrate Pagan Holidays is to create useful books for pagan families to help guide you in celebrating different traditions. It's never too soon to start thinking about how your baby will be growing up. Your child will also be grateful that you introduce them to magic. And my personal belief, and I have been a teacher over 25 years, is when children practice magic, they enhance their creativity and problem solving skills. I hope this video has given you some ideas on ways to celebrate the birth or adoption of a child into your family. Remember, there is no right and wrong in this festive time. You do you. I appreciate you being part of this community. Thanks for watching and have a very witchy day.